Hello everyone and welcome for this new tutorial. Today we will see how to use the new feature in Unreal 5.4 to update PCG in runtime. You will see we will be able to choose a seed and then generate the all of the world object with PCG and we'll be able to change it in runtime. And it was something that was not available before. And now in the 5.4, we can generate it when we load the level or we can generate it even during the game. We could change the entire landscape by changing the seed in PCG and regenerating everything during the runtime. So we'll see that, we'll go into Unreal and we'll start playing with PCG. Okay, so here we are, we are back in Unreal. We have this little landscape with simply a player start. We will start by creating a new folder, we'll call that PCG. And into this PCG folder, we'll create a new PCG graph, which will be the PCG for our forest. We'll make something very simple, we're just gonna spawn some trees and then we will see how to update the spawn of the tree into the runtime. In the 5.4, the um, PCG is a little bit different. We don't have the landscape data anymore in the input, but we can right click and do get landscape data. And in here, we will have all the landscape data that we need. In here, we can see that we can choose we can get the actor reference, physical material, and so on. We have different settings that we can choose. We're just gonna keep it like that, and we'll do a surface sampler like we'll do before. And this surface sampler will do a transform point. Transform point. We just rotate of 360, maybe do like dot eight and one dot two in here. Okay. We will add a little density filter to remove some of the tree. Do something like that. And we will do a static mesh spawner. So that's a very classic uh, PCG graph. Add a new mesh on tree. Up. We can see that we have some new. We have a new instance static mesh that we can choose, which is the Chaos VD instance static mesh. I don't know what it is for now. I didn't check it out. For us, we will keep working with the hierarchical instant static mesh. That was very good. We we'll choose a tree from the dreamscape. Meshes, then trees. We choose this one. Hop. And we'll keep everything as default for now. Just the mobility will do static. And let's add our PCG into the world. Up. So we have a forest now. Just gonna make it as big as our landscape. So here is our nice little forest. If I launch the game, we can see we have a nice forest. Here it is. We have our tree that are spawned and they're there and they cannot change. So now the thing that we want to do is to change the seed of the PCG to update the position of the trees. And to do that, if we go in here, we have our PCG forest. And now we have some new settings into the PCG component. In here, into the settings, we have a generation triggers. And we can change. We have generate on load. That was the default. It was going to generate on the loading of the game. We have the generate on demand. It will be generated when we request it in via Blueprint. Or we have generate at a runtime. For us, we will choose to generate on demand. So we will be able to generate it whenever we want. And now something very cool. We can actually generate our PCG into the level Blueprint. I go in there. I'm just going to clean up this. I don't want it to be generated. So if I launch the game, I don't have any PCG. So I don't have any PCG. I don't have any trees into my forest anymore. I just I have cleaned up the PCG. And now I will be able to tell him to generate it. I will go into the level blueprint. Into the level blueprint, I'm going to click onto my PCG forest and I can right click now and I can create a reference to the PCG forest. This is the PCG forest that we can find into the viewport. This is the, the reference. And we could actually, we could set the, we need to get the PCG component. 
And from this PCG component, we will be able to set the seed. We'll do a random integer between 0 and 15,000. And now we can actually clean up like that to make sure that we remove the previous forest if there was already a forest. And then we can generate. Up. We'll click on, we'll select force to be sure that it's gonna generate straight away. And we'll compile and save. And now if I launch the game, we are getting a forest generated when we launch the game into the beginning play of the level. So you have our nice forest. And now something very cool is that we could actually change the seed and regenerate every time we want to change our forest. If I go back into my level blueprint, I'm gonna disconnect that. I'm gonna create a custom event, generate PCG forest. Okay. And in here, I will do a set timer by event. And I will be able to call this event. I will do one second for now. I will make it looping. One thing is that I will just reduce a little bit the number of tree. One per square will do 0 0.0.5. Okay. And now, if I go there in here, I will just generate to make sure we generate at the beginning. Okay. And if we launch the game, you can see that every second we are regenerating the forest into the runtime. So we are actually playing the game and the forest is being regenerated. So obviously we don't want, don't really want to have that in the game. Maybe you want to have something like that in the game, but we can actually change our forest with a seed. So to create some procedurally generated world. That's very cool. You could, in the main menu, ask for a seed or generate a seed yourself. Place the seed into the either the level blueprint or you can do it into the game mode and then generate all of the PCGs that you have into your game and then generate a world based on a seed by using the PCG. And something very cool that you can also do I'm going to just disconnect this. We will go in here and we will create a new blueprint class. Make an actor. Oops, we'll call this blueprint underscore update PCG in runtime. I will add a cube. I will make a little platform that when I step on it, the entire world will change. You will see it should be very cool. For this cube, I will make it smaller like that. I will add a box collision to actually trigger when the character goes on top of it. Up like that. Up. Okay. That should be good enough. And we'll go into the component beginning overlap. Now we can do a get all actor of class, and the class will be PCG volume, volume like that. And by doing this, we will actually get all of the PCG volume that are in our viewport. So if we have a PCG for the grass, a PCG for the forest, for the rocks, and everything like that. We will get all of them and then we just have to set a seed. For example, I'm getting all of them, then I'm gonna get a random int. Oops, we'll get a random integer. No. Random int. Max will be 10,000 or 1,000, it's okay, it's the same. And with this, we can now do a for each. 
and for each of the PCG volume that I have retrieved, I'm gonna get the PCG component. I'm gonna first create a local variable for this random integer seed do updated seed up tac perfect then we we'll set the seed of the PCG component with our updated seed and now we we'll do the cleanup and the generate and now when we will be stepping on top of this platform, we'll be regenerating all of our PCG in the level with the new seed. Generate, make sure to remove the component and to force into the generate. Now if I compile and save, if I place this little box in here, up, up, our little platform, Okay. Now we don't have anything generated. Maybe we can generate it a first time like that up into the level blueprint to make sure we have something when we start the game. So we have a forest that is generated. And now if I go in here and work on it, the entire forest got updated in a real time. I can go away, then come back. I can do that multiple times, and every time the forest is different. That's very cool. It was not possible to do that before, especially in runtime. There was a way to do it into the editor, to update like that into the editor before, but it was not working in a package game. And to show you that it is working, I will package the game and we will see each other when the game is packaged. Okay, so the game is, is packaged. I'm gonna launch it and we will see how it goes. Okay, so here is the game. You can see that the PCG is generated at the loading of the level by the level blueprint. And if I go there, my forest change every time we enter on top of this platform. And that's it. We can actually generate or PCG on runtime and create some procedurally generated world. That's very cool. That's it for this tutorial. It's a very cool new feature that they added into PCG. We can generate in runtime all of our PCG. So we'll be able to create, make into the, mu the, the menu before generating the level, get a seed, save that into the game mode, and from the game mode, send that into all of our PCG and generate our level on demand. And that's a very cool feature that was not there into the 5.3 and which is there now in the 5.4. So if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. On to the next video, we'll see one of the other new features into PCG, which is the PCG biome. We'll be able to create some biome, like a snow biome, a forest, a tropical forest and stuff like that. And it will use the PCG that we want. And that's it. So we'll see each other on the next video. Bye.